I don't know how many of you have owned a BMW before and gotten so angry at it that you've wanted to do terrible, terrible things, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of you. And honestly, this is so, so satisfying to watch right now. This X6M be buried. What an enormous turd. Welcome to Hoovy's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube. And two years ago, I was in BMW Nirvana. I assembled the BMW Dream Team, what I believe to be the greatest automotive lineup of all time. And that was BMW from 2001. All fantastic cars. Many of them I bought as projects, but they were very easy to fix because that was the golden era of BMW. But it didn't take very long for BMW to slip into this horrible world of unreliability and difficulty to work on. And that's where I find myself now, in BMW Project Hell, but also it's a healthy dose of my own stupidity. So to recap, I bought this BMW X6M sight unseen at an auction that it was listed as running and driving, and it showed up as a complete and utter disaster. It is a piece of junk, total piece of junk. The engine was swapped with a non-M engine. So it's not even an X6M anymore. It just has a normal five liter V8 or 4.4. I really don't care, but it doesn't run right with the M ECUs. There's, there's just basically no way of fixing it without spending $10,000 for a different motor. They blow up so often, that's how much a used one sells for, a new one equally as expensive. So the car is mechanically totaled and useless. So to give myself a little bit of an outlet for my anger, I'm going to go and do something from the old Hoobies Garage playbook. Now that I have a few acres, I can dig a hole and I can bury this car and see if it will start one year later. I've done it twice. Uh, the 1983 Chrysler Baron started after a year. The 2004 Range Rover with the BMW engine, uh, go figure, it didn't start. So I imagine that's what will happen here, but we'll see. You, you, never, you never know, I suppose. Um, but the other project, well, this is more just for my own stupidity. Yes, I was a complete and total idiot with this 2006 BMW M6. It only has 22,000 miles. It is the nicest one probably still in existence, but it did have the SMG manual transmission, and it is pretty clunky. I wanted to manual swap it. They make a kit for it, but I didn't read the fine print and my parts car, it's completely, totally wrong. Yes, absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous condition. Love the color, love the spec, love this car, even though it does have its major mechanical gotchas, but with only 22,000 miles, you don't have to worry about the rod bearings exploding or the uh, SMG system completely taking a dump like this M5 right here. Apparently, they just put a clutch on this car six months ago. This is like my old M5, and now six months later, the SMG transmission has completely destroyed itself, uh, maybe 100,000 miles on it. There's another X6 over here at Johnny's shop, German Motor Works, with a blown engine. This is an M car, but it's a one year only thing and they're having a lot of trouble getting it running even though they replaced the engine. Another shop did apparently. And now Johnny has to figure out why that one's not running properly. Uh, sort of like this X6, which I'm you know, completely giving up on. But the screw up on this was getting the parts car. This does have the right serial number transmission. It is the correct one, but it is the wrong bell housing. If I had read properly and was not a complete fool, on FCP Euro's website, I would have seen that I need to get a E90 series BMW M3 transmission, not one from the 645. It is the wrong bell housing. It will not bolt up to the V10. Even though it's a six series, it has an old V8 in it. This V10 has a more modern uh, bolt up pattern for the gearbox, so I need something from an M3. That is $8,000. There's no used ones. There, there's no availability to it. And you know, I think I'm just taking it as a sign. This car wasn't supposed to die. I could use a lot of the parts from it for the swap, but not the transmission. So why kill it for little bits that I could find? So this car, as angry as you all were for me killing it because it's a good car, well, it gets to get all put back together again. It gets to live again and it's going to have a new clutch and a lot of things fixed. So good for this car, it gets to live. The M6, I'm just going to leave alone. It is totally fine as is. Yes, a little clunky with the SMG, but this car is only 20,000 miles. It's practically a museum piece. I need to make it as nice as I can possibly do it and then keep it like this because there's very few like it. Even though there's only a couple hundred of the uh, manual ones in existence, I don't imagine me spending uh, like 15 grand swapping this car would make any kind of sense. So uh, these two cars live and this one well, it's most certainly going to get all of my aggression taken out of it. It is going to die. And if you're angry about that, well, you're absolutely crazy because the paint job's ruined. It has two accidents on the Carfax 
Everything about this car is nasty except the interior, surprisingly. Every single light is on because it's the wrong engine. This car, if it was nice, it might be worth 15 grand, but it needs a $10,000 engine and a $10,000 paint job. It, it, it's, it's completely nasty, ruined, destroyed. And while I don't have much hope for this car starting after a year since it barely starts right now, uh, this is just going to be therapeutic for me. And the Car Ninja is going to be extremely, extremely happy. Uh, speaking of Ninja, there he is. Ninja, working on, what is this, an X1, an X3? This is the worst one ever, look at this. Oh. 110,000 miles, and the guide is broken. The timing chain guide has failed at 110,000 miles on a, what year is this BMW? Uh, I think it's 11, 12. So a little over 13. 10, a 13, so it's 10 years old, 100,000 miles, and it just jumped time and it smoked. Mm -hmm. And they've been having timing chain issues with BMW since the 90s, around 2000. Yeah. And here we are in 2013, and they still haven't figured it out yet. No. <laughs> but BMWs, I, I have one nice BMW that I'm going to go check on in this video after I get the X6 out of here. Are you? Yes, it's going. Listen. I want to do a dance, but I cannot dance. So imagine me dancing, a happy dance. The X6 is going. Oh. Obviously, I screwed up on the transmission, which is sitting yeah. over here on the 645. We discovered that thanks to a lot of comments in the video. So this won't bolt up to an M6. It's the right transmission, but it's the wrong bell housing or whatever. So we'll put it back. the 645 gets put back together. Yes. It needed a clutch anyway. We'll put the clutch there was a leaking brake master cylinder, right? Yes. No, the brake is the clutch master cylinder. Oh, the clutch master cylinder. Okay. And it's on its way here. The airbag light, which is going to be a little bit of a thing. And then the check engine light for the gas cap. And then it's mechanically great other than yep. like the sunroof visor thing, which yep. I'll leave alone, the little cosmetic issues. But it'll be a good driver for someone. Uh, I guess I'll sell it for, if, I don't know, $10,000 will be probably about 1000 less than what I have into it. But the car can live on. It only has 60,000 miles on it. So that's good news. But yep. the, the X6, Yes. the hole is being dug. Nice. And we are driving it into it, and we are burying that turd. Nice. So picture me doing a happy dance. Will do. All right. Well, I dropped off the M6 so you can look it over. Okay. Just go through to a service. I think okay. it had one little oil leak. We'll completely get it sorted out as nice as can be, but yeah. we're just going to leave it alone if that's Perfect. all right. Yep, we'll do. Okay. All right. Well, I'm off, and one last drive of this absolute piece of garbage. Oh, it's been a while since I've driven this thing. And I have forgotten how bad it is. Oh, oh, all the lights on. The suspension is also deflated and blown on this thing, the rear airbags. So it drives terribly. It should have 500 horsepower, but you floor it. I'm flooring it right now. No risk of rear-ending the car in front of me. I'm still foot to the floor. I should be destroying that Honda right there, but my still foot to the floor. And we have just hit hit 40 by shift we might get another gear come on there we go and then we might get more speed it is in full big limp mode because it has the wrong engine in it i mean somebody took this car obviously probably with a blown engine which only 71,000 miles on it and it blew its motor either that or they took it for a car that had a blown motor and then swapped in this total junk v8 that will never run right in this car Yep, there's the uh, suspension error as well. Huh. And so many little broken trim pieces as well. Uh, it's had paint work, so you can't really blame BMW for the paint failing. I mean, the really only good thing about this car is the interior has held up really well. They're very good with BMW and their interior trim uh, fit and finish. And that's the only thing that's good on this thing. Otherwise, it is complete and total junk and deserves to die. I don't even think it'll get enough power to get some air on my berm, but we'll certainly give it a try before we dig the hole and drive it down there. What a hunk of junk. <laughs> I'm glad that I am finally releasing myself of this utter stupidity and can just go back to my life without uh, these complicated modern BMWs because I've been through this so many times with Bengal butts. There was the 745, which uh, the wizard was able to fix, and then the M5, 
which uh, the wizard wasn't able to fix, but Johnny was able to figure out it's with the SMG transmission that is just a total pain in the butt. That was a failure. So there's one success there, but then a series of failures with a 760, <laughs> bouncing like crazy here, an Alpina B7, a complete utter failure. This, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a few others. Uh, the, the older ones, I've been able to sort out reasonably well. We used to think those were total pains in the butt, but uh, really compared to these modern BMWs that are just absolutely not worth owning. And BMW doesn't seem interested in doing anything about making their cars more durable. They just keep building junk. And I guess we keep buying it, so y'all are just as dumb as me. But uh, we're going to end this one's life properly so it can't ruin anybody else's. All right, so back on the farm, you can see where they're digging. But uh, we can have a little bit of fun first. Not hit 100% Jake's BMW. But I'm not even sure if this thing's gonna have the oomph to get over the hell. Oh my God, the bumps are just so terrible in this thing. Yeah, will it go? Come on, up. I'm not even sure if I make it over, which it looks like it's barely gonna make it over. No, it's stuck. It, it won't even make it over the hill. I mean, even new, these weren't very good off-roaders. They called them sport activity vehicles. So that's not gonna fly. I think, I think it just needs to go straight into the hole, honestly. We can do a little bit of yard work here first. There we go. All right. And then around the berm here, I have the bank turn. Oh, God. Ow. All right, well, that's the last time I'm gonna do that. So it's just time to put this thing into the hole, which, which if you see through here, we have Hoovy's Garage 3.0, the site right here 6,000 square feet. I've gone for the 60 by 100 here. I know I was caught between three choices, but 60 by 100, it's plenty big. It takes up a lot of space. I was gonna go with an 80 by 100, but then that tree would have to come down. We have to be this far from the property line. And then if we go too far back, like past 100, then we get into the septic system, which we certainly don't want. So it uh, seemed like as big as I could go without it looking absolutely ridiculous. So. While this thing is still running though, let's get it in the hole over there. So I'm not one to boast that much, but I do have a few years experience of doing this. And I was looking at it, uh, the X5 or the X6 doesn't have a lot of places to uh, say mount things. There's a tow hook on the front. So we have that tow hook, which we can use to pull it out. But if that doesn't work, then we need to kind of use the scooper to like scoop push it out like we did with the LeBaron. And if you do that, uh, going front ways and you have to do it backwards, then we smash up the front. There's no chance of it starting again. If we had to do it from the back, then there's a hope, a prayer of this thing starting one more time. So I am actually going to back it in. I need to maneuver it under the boom here, which uh, might have been nice if I didn't break that mirror, but okay. Be all right. Oh yeah, no problem. We'll line it up on the hole here. Yep, okay. And send her on in. The parking sensors are, uh, the parking sensors are quite mad. Here we go. Into the grave, she goes. There we go. Like a glove. Parking sensors are going wild. This one, uh, about seven feet deep. So let's see if it can drive itself out before we go. Now these X6s are so useless, in addition to the parking sensors. How do I turn them off? It, it's really mad. But in addition to not being very good as they get old, they're really pretty terrible off-roaders. So it is technically capable of driving itself out of the hole right now, but we'll see a year from now if it can do it. All right, we'll center it here in the hole. I'm gonna angle it up a little bit so it's easier to get out. We'll put the windows up. 
and this is it. It's running like absolute garbage. But time to shut it off. We'll see if it moves again in a year. Now I'm gonna put one piece of plywood to sort of bend and protect the dirt from going in. And no, I'm not sitting in it this time. That was the dumbest thing I've ever done because the wizard could not hear me scream when I was buried in the Range Rover. This one, it'll be right at the surface basically, so close to the surface unlike before, so stands a better chance from the Range Rover. Oh, you're being so gentle. I don't know how many of you have owned a BMW before and gotten so angry at it that you wanted to do terrible, terrible things, but uh, I'm sure there's a lot of you. And honestly, this is so, so satisfying to watch right now, this X6M be buried. What an enormous turd. The diggers are all done. Great job, Ryan. It actually looks pretty level and nice here. Somewhere, not too far down, just a foot or two, is an X6 that used to be an M. So, you know, we should probably lock it just to make sure, yeah, nobody gets in there. And we'll see it in a year. Yes, in a year, hopefully, Hoobie's Garage 3.0 is built. Master Suite Edition is done, and things are a lot greener and nicer. It's pretty torn up right now. But I'm not quite done here yet because I do want to end things on a positive note. Been pretty hard on BMWs, but they are pretty amazing machines. At least they were a couple of decades ago. And there's one car I've had for two years and I just love it more and more every day. So let's go see it. Time for a bit of a palate cleanser right here with the 2001 BMW Z8. Totally analog, naturally aspirated, individual throttle body, MV8, six-speed manual, styling after the beautiful classic 507, so retro-inspired, and not an iDrive screen in sight in here. I've owned this car for two years. It has been absolutely flawless ownership for the last two years, and I love this car oh so much. The center-mounted gauges, old-school BMW at its best right here. Yeah. And apparently the battery's a little bit too old school because it's dead. The battery is dead. Thank you so much for watching.